Hey crafters, so today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Brothers Canvas Workspace app um, on my Mac. So I'm going to be bringing in an image um, from the computer. I found a black and white clip art peacock. I found that like clip art images in black and white are the easiest to bring in. Um, they're the cleanest like trace transfer. So you want to go to image trace, which looks like the little spade. And then you want to basically bring in your image. So as you can see, I changed the number of colors. This is a black and white photo. There's only two colors. You get a lot more detail when you limit the number of colors versus having more cover colors. It picks up more. And I also changed it to trace areas by color. Um, this one, it did pick up everything when it was just on outer edge, but I just think it's a good practice to do trace area by color. And I do not paste the original image into the the mat because for me I find it confusing I think it's much easier to see what I'm actually cutting if I only put the cut file in there and so I'm showing you all the different little tabs you can look at on the edit tab it tells you the size of your image um the next one is your layers which is where you can also group it down at the bottom where you see the little square in the left on the left hand side but this shows you all the cuts and then the next one is the artboard which basically just tells you more about your mat and then we're going to go back to properties so i personally like to group it by left clicking so you select the entire image that you're grouping and then you right click and hit group and it groups as this one image um and the peacock pretty much came out perfectly. I think it looks so adorable. I'm obsessed with peacocks though. And so next I'm going to add some text in. Um, I am making a shirt. And so I wanted a peacock. Um, it's going to be blue I think. And so I was trying to think of something. Peacocks are so beautiful and unique. So I said be one of a kind instead of one of the flock. Because the peacock is the bird. So as you can see it automatically when you put the text in. It defaults to whatever the first text is which is like antique something so one of the big big things i love about the canvas workspace app versus the actual online app is you get all of these fonts on the online app they're only like nine fonts guys that is the number one reason to upgrade to the app like the download app the drawback is you can only download this on your computer you can't download it on your iphone or your android or a tablet which sucks because you can definitely use the online portal from your phone, your iPad, wherever. And then I just want to note real quick that once you pick a font, automatically every time you add in another section of font, it will default to the font that you're currently using. Um, you cannot do separate lines of font. So, you know, you see how I wanted three lines of font. You can't do that by hitting like enter um, if there is a way to do it, I don't know it. So if you know it, please let me know down in those comments so I don't have to insert like three separate pieces of font. But it's not a big deal. And so once you've got this, this text, I like to click each of them while I'm on that edit tab to see what size they are so I can make them a similar size. And then what's really cool is that you can also highlight um, all of those items. Well, I don't even think that's what I was meaning to do I guess I grouped them but what's really cool is that you can take and you can line everything up with some of the um the cool tools in that edit panel I guess I just wanted to move it all so I grouped it all together so I can kind of get a shape how I want get it on the mat where I want I love that it gives you like a, a mat to look at. So now I'm going to line it up. So I'm just highlighting the words. And then over here where it says line, I'm center aligning all of the words. You can do um, the alignments for the length of the text and then also the height of the text. And so now what I'm going to do is group everything back together. And a cool trick that I like to do is to add a box behind whatever I'm cutting out, like a black box. So I can get a really good look at what it'll look like once I put it on my machine and weed it. Um, it. It really highlights the cut line. So you go to that layer screen to get it to the bottom. The layers are in order. So if as you saw, I dragged the shape to the bottom so it'll be the bottom layer. And this just gives me a really good idea of what it's going to look like when I cut it out. I just wanted a better idea of how my peacock would look. Um, with the words so I thought that's I think that's a really cool trick just so you can be sure how it's gonna look 
once you weeded your design um, and then I delete it you can leave that in your design and have that square cut and then just peel it off but I just delete mine so once I get it how I like it I always make sure I save my project like the worst thing you want to do is get a project exactly how you like and not save and so once I've saved it then because I'm putting it on a shirt I make sure in that same edit tool to flip my design I like to flip my designs before I send it to my machine because it is much easier to do it when it's bigger because if you see it versus when it's smaller you may forget because you're so excited to get cutting and working and everything and so I know that I want my peacock to be blue but I think I want my letters to be a different color so I'm actually going to ungroup it and then I'm going to just group the letters and move them over to the side um so that like I said once I send this to my machine it's already exactly how I need it to be for cutting I just think it's easier to set yourself up for cutting and so then I'm going to save my project and then I'm going to send it to my my machine which is super easy and that's pretty much it guys so hopefully you give this video a thumbs up and check out the video of the project